In its quarter of a millennia history, the Royal Academy of Arts Summer Exhibition is opening in autumn. Yes, because of the pandemic. One of the biggest contemporary art shows, they've got about 1,200 works on display. Newbies sit next to big names such as Ai Weiwei and Tracy Emin. And some pieces are about the lockdown and politics. We didn't want to go down in history as the, as the people in charge when the summer exhibition didn't happen for the first time in 252 years. I think, again, it's a different experience. I think people will be able to commune with the works a lot more. Um, they'll be able to reflect on the works more because they'll have more time in a less crowded atmosphere. But yes, that kind of, um, that, that sort of celebration of, of being in the galleries with so many other people will slightly be lost. The old way of consuming exhibitions is not the only thing that's lost. The RA announced they were about to cut 40% of its staff. That's about 150 jobs lost. Because of the pandemic, the Academy has lost about $10 million from its annual budget this year. They're relying on ticket sales and donations only, there's no government grant. And social distancing means a lot less tickets. However, unnamed sources in the British media are saying that the sale of a Michelangelo is being discussed. The statue, Tadei Tondo, could be worth more than $125 million, according to the art newspaper. But a spokesperson from the Academy says the museum has no interest in selling anything in its permanent collection, saying it's their duty to look after it for current and future generations to enjoy. This would be considered an unethical sale which would have very serious consequences for us as an institution afterwards and would basically undermine our business model in its entirety, um, so it's, it's not really an option. While some art critics think selling an artwork could solve problems, many museum directors think the pieces they display are not their monetary assets. In July, the British Prime Minister promised about $2 billion to help the art sector survive the pandemic. So it's more likely that the RA will help fill their funding gap instead of selling the Michelangelo piece. Let's speak to Simon Tenner, a professor of digital cultural heritage at King's College London. Hi, Simon. Thanks a lot for joining us on Showcase today. So, let me just I am glad to be here. ask you straight away, do you think that it would be unethical to sell that Michelangelo? I don't think it would be unethical. I think the Royal Academy has got a really difficult task in front of it. Um, it has to make some really tricky decisions. But the mission of the Royal Academy of Arts is more than just to be a place that has a collection. It supports young artists. It has the Royal Academy schools, it has significant exhibitions of new art and new artist work, and it also has its collections and a range of other activities around that. Now, the issue to me here is not is one of maybe, you know, this really difficult situation of making a decision between property and people. And in a sense, you know, if you're looking at this as an institution, People are more important than property. It's what will keep the Royal Academy's mission going for the future is going to be maintaining the people who generate the value of what the Academy does over one specific piece of art by an Italian artist. I think that's the ethical question that's really in, in, in tension here. But I guess there are some possible other ways of uh, you know, maintaining people of Royal Academy of Arts. So why do you think this is a good way to do it? Uh, uh, is it a good way of doing it is a really interesting question. Right? The, the, the sense here is, is that um, uh, they should be exploring every opportunity that they've got other than selling this work of art. But if at the end of the day they're left with the choice of selling this one uh, Italian uh, piece of art um, for 100 million uh, pounds or somewhere in that region. There's a lot of things they can do with that money in terms of an endowment to 
protect the future of this national institution of great value. But also, um, they could also use a very tiny amount of that money, maybe £25,000, to create a 3D image of the work itself. That, uh, at such great detail that they could create reproductions, they could also use that in research and in education for future uh, generations of, of, um, uh, of artists. So having the item in the collection, if it's just one item, and I've done consultancy for the, the Royal Academy in the past, and they have thousands upon thousands of amazing pieces of, of, of art and sketches and uh, sculptures and various different items. If it comes down to one item or 150 jobs, and there's, you know, having the item in your collection is it's very difficult to say that that's that, that would that would be more important than anything else you wanted to do as an organization okay simon don't you think that it would be a little bit maybe extreme to go for the most prized possession of royal academy of arts i mean you, i understand you said that it should be the last resort i mean uh, the accessioning obviously is, is a controversial issue but then there are so many others other works of art there as well so how do you feel about that Yes, it's it's uh, to a certain extent it's um, uh, it, I mean, it's it's an almost impossible situation, isn't it? Uh, and it's an impossible question uh, around around these elements. Um, I suppose the question would be, you know, if you were uh, uh, trying to uh, resolve the difficulties and the problems uh, in the most straightforward way, uh, you may choose the one piece of art that isn't British, you would choose the one piece of art that has the greatest amount of financial value because that's why you're selling it. You're not selling it for any other reason. You're selling it because you need to accrue as much money as possible. And therefore that pushes you towards this particular um, work of art. Mm -hmm. And uh, and in that sense, uh, it becomes a much more pragmatic decision. Okay. Um, you know, and if one's making the balance here, you know, this piece of art is not a national treasure to the UK. The Royal Academy of, of Arts is a national treasure to the UK. So how do you protect what is the genuine national treasure here? Um, maybe you have to make this difficult choice in the last resort. Okay, so um, what if Royal Academy of Arts, it, it was a public institution? Do you think uh, your thoughts would be different on this? I think my thoughts, yes, they would. And where I think my thoughts would be different on this is to do with the nature and mission of the organisation. So let's say this was a collecting gallery, the National Gallery, the Victoria and Albert, something along those lines, where collecting was actually at the heart of the mission of the organisation and was, you know, in some respects, without the collection, they are, they are, they are not an organisation. So I would I would change my thoughts a little bit in terms of where it would sit in terms of the, the, the relative values and choices that were being made. And because there would be other sources of money, um, you know, there would be the we'd be looking to the government, we'd be looking to other support structures that just aren't available to the to, to the National Academy of Arts. The other question that would um lost my train of thought just for a moment here but the other question that would um uh come into this is 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 also the way in which the collecting policy um was being filtered through that 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 public institution and the value of that to the nation mm -hmm. um i probably lost my coherence there a little bit in terms of that answer okay don't worry because i have more questions for you I just sure. want to clear something up because I think I might have lost that as well. Do you not think that it's a national treasure? Personally, and speaking, not as so, I'm not an art historian. Okay, so I have to put that caveat on this at the beginning. But personally, from my perspective, this is a very, very significant work of art by an Italian artist. We've done a lot of work over the years thinking about questions of repatriation, of, of provenance of artworks, etc. So can we really say that this is a national treasure unless we're taking the concept of national to mean it is treasure that we have gathered to our nation mm -hmm. as opposed to it is an, ex an, an, an expression of our nationhood, of our 
culture and, and, and background. Yeah. This piece of work, in a sense, is a wonderful expression of Italian culture and nationhood, and in that sense. And you know, it's not that we are, it's not that we're talking about the repatriation of works that sh we should never have had in, in that sense, but we are talking about a work of art which isn't in itself an expression of the United Kingdom. It's an expression of the collection that is held in the United Kingdom. The thing that's the national treasure here is the Royal Academy of Arts, not the individual piece of artwork. All right. So, Simon, uh, we have very little time left. So, just one very quick question. So, Let's say this happened and a private collectioner bought this, but then that collection is not publicly viewable. Would you be bothered by this if we'd never be able to see this artwork again? My solution to that is that the, uh, the Royal Academy of Arts should take the opportunity to create an extremely exact digital facsimile of the work before they put it on sale. That would enable them to sell the object, which is mm -hmm. the thing that has financial value, while maintaining the artistic information uh, for study, for reference. You could create incredibly accurate reproductions um, and you'd have the digital model, which would allow for all sorts of new investigations around it. I think they can, to a certain extent, have their cake and eat it a little bit in this case. Um, but we always re re remember that the original art will always have a certain magic to it Yes. that would be lost if it was hidden away in, in, a, in a private collection. All right, this was definitely thought-provoking. Thank you, thank you so much, Simon Tanner, for joining us on Showcase today.